Hey guys, the objective of this video and the, the videos to follow is to design the shear reinforcing. So just to talk a bit about the process, the first thing we're going to be doing is checking that our N12 stirrups are adequate. Okay, so we've always seen this example like this. This is a section through our beam with our reinforcing bars like that, which take the, the uh, bending, the flexure. And this little square here is the stirrups, right? And the only thing that actually resists shear are these vertical stirrups here. So those two vertical stirrups, we call them the legs, they resist shear. So we need to check that these legs have some type of minimum area, which the code um, tells us. So the area of the steel, the V is for shear, the area of steel in shear is we have, we, these are N12 bars, we've, said, we've always said the stirrups are N12. So these, this, this stirrups are N12. So we have, for shear, two bars. So th those two bars are resisting the shear. So it's two by pi by six squared will give us 226 millimeters squared of area resisting shear. Now the code in section 8.2.8 .8 has a minimum area requirement. So if I show you that, 8.2.8, .8, we have the minimum shear reinforcement, um, ASV min equals this which has to be greater than that. So all we need to do is just find that value there and ensure that our steel is greater. Let me just zoom in for you. So ASV min has to be greater than this. That's in section 8.2.8. .8. So I've just written a bit bigger here for you. Now, um, finding these terms, BV is the width of the web. S is the spacing, okay? Now we need to know straight up the, the, the uh, maximum spacing we can deal with. So the maximum spacing, S, you can find in 8.2.12.2. So 8.2.12.2, it's over the page. We have a clause for spacing. So spacing, um, we read here, shear reinforcement shall be spaced longitudinally, not further apart.